Hello and welcome to All Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and I'm just trying to connect my headphones to the right device here. <laughs> this is All Knit If I Want To. This is where I answer your questions every week that you all so thoughtfully send in. Y'all always have the best questions. So thank you so much for filling out the form and asking them because otherwise this would not be a thing. <laughs> if you have a question you would like to see answered, there is a link to the form you can fill out right below in the description below this video. So go ahead and click that. A lot of times it says show more or something along those lines. You click that and you'll see the whole drop down. It'll have all of today's questions that I'm answering. Um, links to anything important, such as what I'm wearing, and the link to the form where you can ask your question. Today I am wearing two new patterns. So I already wore this the other week, but I'm wearing it again. It has been in very heavy rotation. Spring is coming in fits and starts here. There are, the trees are budding. We've got some flowers popping up, but it is still pretty chilly out there this week. It has been cold and rainy 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 i'm really ready for a little sunshine but thankfully today is actually my baby boy's birthday and tomorrow it looks like we're gonna have some sunshine for his little birthday party so yay um back to what i'm wearing though so i'm wearing the traveler which is perfect for this kind of weather um this is the crew neck version so this one doesn't have the hood on it and I'm wearing it with the cowl I released just this week. So this is the Rad Plaid Cowl. I could not think of a better name. Uh, this is what it started off as. Usually I think of like a silly name just as a space holder as I'm writing the pattern and I never came up with a new one this time. So this is actually a three color cowl. You can't really tell from back there. Let's see if I hold it up a little closer. So in here, we have got a gray single ply farm yarn from Hinterland Yarns. It is a Rambouillet and alpaca blend. And then there is some baby Surrey alpaca from La Bieta May. It's their Kumo base, is this lavender. And then this color changing is my hand spun. So that was a combo spin using um, Hello Yarn, a braid from Hello Yarn. I think it was a club color. And then a bat from Artitex, Artitex? <laughs> Artifacts of Appreciation. This is actually my leftover cake. I still have so much of this yarn left, which makes me really happy. I, I mean, there's gotta be like 500 yards in here still. Um, I'm thinking a one color fingering weight Harlow hat. I've shown on here before, I so Harlow hat comes in two different weights. You can get the original or I published a worsted weight one as well. And I did another hand spun hat with the worsted weight and I just did one color instead of two. So the pattern's really easy to adapt to one color. You just use the same color for every row instead of swapping back and forth between two colors. Um, so that is what is in this red plaid cowl and I've also been wearing this so much. It's been perfect for the weather that we have been having. <laughs> that little extra warmth. Um, but yeah, it's been a little crazy here this, this past few weeks if I'm being honest. I could not even find another bobby pin so we've got half pinned hair right now. Um, and I think that this is kind of a little little bit low. Thankfully you cannot see the rest of my studio right now because it's pure chaos. I got back to work this past month and I had two retreats that I taught at which were both amazing. It really, I couldn't have asked for a better way to jump back into work than being able to teach at those retreats. I feel really, really grateful to get that time to spend with such amazing knitters. Um, really just filled, filled me right up. But in the meantime, we have had an awful stomach bug go through our house for like three weeks. Um, and as I said, it's my little boy's birthday tomorrow. And I just published a pattern and I'm as quickly as I can writing up another pattern that is a little tricky to write. So it has just been go, go, go over here. So it feels nice to sit down here and chat with you and answer some questions.
Oh, by the way, this version of the Traveler is knit up in Ritual Dyes Sprite. So I don't think I mentioned which yarn that was. Of course, I'll link to the patterns below. Okay, let's answer some questions. I hope you've got maybe something nice to sip on. A little coffee, a little tea. I've, just, I've got water here. <laughs> I think you can actually hear in my voice a little bit all the talking I've been doing, teaching. I'm like, oh, my voice sounds a little, a little low, a little roughed up. All right. I just made my first weekender, but really don't love the garter bumps on the outside, so made it inside out. So when they say garter bumps, they're talking about reverse stockinette. It's not garter; it's just the pearls. Um, so the weekender is the reverse stock in it so pearl side facing out instead of the flat knit side um so i made it inside out with knit showing on the body and pearl showing on the sleeve awesome i'm pretty happy with it except how the faux seam center stitch looks on the knit side it's just a ditch womp womp. <laughs> i went back in after finishing the sweater and made decorative x stitches in the ditch is there a way to get that cool faux center seam to show up when the knit side is showing or a different solution you've seen in all the ones others have made. So uh, for one, it sounds like you came up with a pretty cute idea for the one you've already made. You could also go back and use a crochet hook to create like a slip stitch line up the front of your sweater to replicate the faux seam um, since your sweater is already finished. In the future, all you'd want to do is slip that knit stitch um, to the knit side instead of to the pearl side. It is not going to stand out as much as it does on that reverse stockinette. That's actually the main reason that the body of that sweater is reverse stockinette is so you can see that faux seam going up the middle. Um, but even on the knit side, you'll be able to see it a little bit. So you could um, just make sure you're slipping that stitch every other row and that you're slipping it to the front. Um, and so on your side, and you wouldn't be purling it, you'd be keeping it knit so that you don't end up with the ditch. So the reason you have a ditch on the side you chose to have front facing is because that's like a pearl ridge, go, you know, a vertical pearl ridge. Um, so you would want to keep those knits instead of pearls. And another thing you could do is even after the fact, you could even use maybe a contrasting color yarn and do again, um, either duplicate stitch or crochet um chain up the front to give it the look of a faux seam and if you want to see what it would look like you could go check out my tinsel mitts pattern that has a little faux seam on the outside of the mitts and it's on the knit side so you'll see you can still see it it just doesn't stand out nearly as much as it would on reverse stockinette hi andrea hello I just finished my first of many DRK everyday sweater. The pattern was so well written and I want to do another. I am hoping to try my first color work sweater, but I'm second guessing my skills. Should adventurous beginners like myself do a color work scarf or hat before casting on a color work sweater? I have done an intarsia cowl, but it was small. Uh, so, I mean, it's all relative, right? It really depends on how adventurous you wanna be. I think you could jump into a sweater, but I think if you're nervous and you're just like, well, I wanna practice my tension and make sure that I can do that evenly, then I think a hat is such a great way to start. And actually a lot of the time you can do a hat as a swatch for your sweater. Um, so Elizabeth Zimmerman talks about that a lot. And then um, Tin Can Knits, Emily and Alexis from Tin Can Knits, they actually in their book, what's it called? Oh, I just saw the tip of my tongue. Strange Brew. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, in their book, Strange Brew, which is a fabulous color work stranded book, um, they even talk about using a hat or a cowl as a swatch for your project. So that might be a really, really fun way to get started on your project because then you could even practice the actual motifs you want to use in the sweater. And that way you'll feel really confident when it's time to cast it on. Um, but I would say if you've already done an intarsia cowl, I think intarsia, well, I guess they have their own unique details that make them um, a could make them a little bit tricky. In Tarja, you have to manage all the little bobbins of color and twist your 
strands. Um, the thing with stranded color work is it's really just managing your floats. You, it, it's better, I think, to be a little too loose than a little too tight because your stitches can kind of shimmy into place, especially with washing and wearing of your garment. Whereas if they're too tight, you just can't, that yarn only stretches so much. Um, so you definitely want to practice being a little bit looser carrying those floats. I have a video uh, here on my channel that you can look up that is tensioning color work. So if you want to see that, and there's all different ways that you can tension your color work to help with that as well, such as knitting your project inside out to help kind of stretch those floats. There's all kinds of things. So I would say if you're ready, go for it, but it definitely wouldn't hurt to start with something like a hat just so you can practice. All right. I recently started spinning and am... So this is so interesting. I think this is like the second time in the past few weeks. I think I kind of messed up when I was copying and pasting. Um, so here's a spinning question. There was another question that I am so sorry whoever asked it, but I think I managed to somehow not paste it in here correctly. I am just going to blame it on the chaos that is my life this month. But it was something along the lines of it was a newer knitter. And I'm going to go back to this other one, by the way. Um, it was a bit of a newer knitter. And they were wondering why in the world I would bother to spin my own yarn. Because it seems like a lot of work. And there's already so much beautiful yarn out there to knit. And you could just skip that part. And I just loved that question. Uh, because I think that's probably how a lot of people look at knitters in general. <laughs> like, you know, you could just go buy a sweater or a hat or some mittens. And yeah, the reason I spin my own yarn, first and foremost, is because it's really fun. I really enjoy it. I love spinning yarn and the whole process of it. I also love knitting with it. Knitting with hand spun to me is very, very different than knitting with machine milled yarn. There is a very different energy in there. And I love that aspect of it. When I knit with my own hand spun, it is the most magical. Um, and the other part that I think would probably go into it for a lot of people too, is you have control of exactly what is in your yarn and the construction of your yarn. So you can play around with all of the different fibers you can put in there. You can mix fibers, you can do single breed, you can try plant fibers, you can try all different kinds of things. And then you get to decide, do I want a single ply, a two ply, a three ply, sky's the limit. How do I want to mix my colors? You know, there's just so, it just opens up your world of options. So just like knitting can do that for you. Like, sure, you can go to a store and you can buy a sweater, but if you make it yourself, you get to make it for your unique body with your unique style in mind. And the more I wear handmade clothing, the more I really feel like myself. And I think it's just taking it up a level <laughs> by also trying to make some of those raw materials that will go into my sweater. So spinning that yarn by myself. Um, I am getting through this crazy, crazy month and then I'm diving in to um, I just lost all my words. I'm looking at it. Preparing the fleece that I got sent. And I can't wait. Um, so yeah, it's just a passion. I love it. But you can absolutely, I mean, the nice thing is, is if it is not a passion for you, there are so many beautiful yarns out in the world that you can try. Um, so you definitely don't have to spin your own, but I highly recommend it. I have actually, I think at both retreats, was trying to talk everyone into becoming spinners because I love it so much. Um, so yeah, I do it because I love it and I love the world it opens up for me. Okay, here's another spinning question. I recently started spinning and I'm having so much fun exploring this wonderful fiber art. As I'm still very new and trying to work on a consistent spin and resulting fiber, I have yarn that is inconsistent in thickness, but I would so very much to like to use it in a project. Please do. Um, are any of your patterns forgiving enough to use with a beginner's hand spun? I think I've heard you mention the Harlow hat, but curious if there are other patterns of yours that I could knit as well. Also, are there things you would caution a beginner spinner of when knitting with their hand spun that is not perfect? 
Thanks so much. So I would recommend any of like my shift cowl, any of that series, the shift along hat. It kind of depends on the weight that you were spinning up. Um, if it's super heavy, that's when it wouldn't work as well for something like that. Um, if you are quite new and your hand spun is very thick and thin, I also think it can be awesome for like wall hangings, like little tapestry weavings and things like that. It's so beautiful with really thick and thin yarn. But otherwise, a couple things. One, hand spun, I think part of the beauty of it is its inconsistencies. That's so delightful that texture I think but a lot of that does get evened out when you ply it um, to an extent and the more plies you do the more it will hide your sins your inconsistencies so a lot of times I default to a three ply yarn because I know it's gonna help give me a more consistent finished yarn than if I just did a two ply because the thick and thin spots in all three of those plies kind of end up wiggling into each other in a way when you're plying that a lot of times it just really helps give you a more consistent end result. Also, it's amazing how much knitting it up hides a lot of that inconsistency Woo! inconsistency as well unless it's very thick and thin but if it's just like when you're looking at it and you're like oh it's a little thick and thin when you're knitting it up it's amazing how much that can hide um the way it's gonna show the most i would say is in stockinette but even reverse stockinette will start to hide that uh garter is also really really lovely for hand spun um where is my cowl it's not right here. I mean, I'm wearing this cowl, <laughs> but my other cowl, my DRK Everyday cowl that I'm doing in this hand spun, I just wanted to lift it up and show you if I could. Come on, focus. There it is. Um, so again, the, this looks pretty consistent. I do not think I'm the world's most consistent spinner, but I just think like this is a three ply and I think that Applying really helps hide it and so does knitting it. So don't be afraid to use it. And I'll tell you what else, you will learn so much more about the yarn you are spinning once you use it. I, I do try to use my hand spun quite a bit, but I still am like, man, I need to be using my hand spun more because every time I do, I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm seeing what's happening with the color more. I'm seeing how this is turning into fabric and I might want to make minor adjustments next time I do a similar spin. So you need to use it to really know what's going on with that yarn, I think. Um, all right. My question is... <laughs> What cast on do you use when casting on extra stitches that will later be picked up and knitted as in necks and underarms? I'm knitting your so faded pint size sweater and as I near the bottom of the sweater, I'm looking at the backward loop cast on stitches which were added at the center of the front neckline and hoping that when I pick up those stitches, there won't be holes because they look rather use, loose. <laughs> um, perhaps a different cast on would have been a better choice. I always use backwards loop. I use backwards loop and I use cable. So cable cast on. And it depends where I am casting those on, depends which of those I'm going to use. So if I am at the end of a row or like jumping to like filling in a gap, I'm gonna use backwards loop such as the front neck. If I am need to cast them on to the beginning before I've even knit into the, my next stitches, I use a cable cast on. A cable cast on tends to be a little bit stronger of a line. Backwards loop cast on is loosey goosey until you stabilize it with knitting more rows. Um, but I've never had issues with picking up stitches and there being holes or issues. I do think what you can do is if you're worried about it, you can always go back with a little bit of leftover yarn to just on the inside of that sweater, do some duplicate stitches and just tighten everything up. Um, but those are my go-tos. I would love if anybody else has alternative mid-project cast-ons that they have found works really well for them. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to answer this question because I love to learn. I love to hear what other people's favorites are so I can try them out. Um, but yes, my go-to is backwards loop cast-on and cable cast-on. If you love a different one, please pop it in the comments below so that we can all check out your suggestion. Last 
question. I'm flying through these today. And I don't know if y'all can tell, there's a little bit of sun trying to come through those dark, 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 dark gray clouds. <laughs> and I will take what I can get. Okay. I'm a fairly new knitter and taught myself mostly using tutorials. So my style of knitting is a hodgepodge of styles that worked for me and were getting the job done. Now that I am several months in and have several projects under my belt, I have noticed that my knitting style isn't efficient and is leading to hand cramps in my left hand. I seem to be doing the English throwing style, but holding the yarn in my left hand. Anyway, I have been trying to teach myself continental. I got the knit stitch down, but can't seem to get the tension correctly with the purl stitch. I am ending up with a tangled mess of yarn in my left hand with no tension. I'm so frustrated and my joy of knitting has now become me struggling with my stitches. Send help. So I feel ya. I, when I first started reading your question, I was like, oh, just stick with what you're doing. Like as long as you're getting, as long as it's working for you, then you don't have to change it. But if it is feeling uncomfortable for your body, then I think you're right in trying to make some adjustments. Um, so, the first thing I recommend, since it sounds like you're a self-motivated learner, and as I relate to, um, is trying the Norwegian Pearl. So a Norwegian Pearl is going to have you keep your knitting needle in the back, um, your yarn in the back, instead of bringing it in front of your needle. And you're gonna do this little like swoopty thing. I'm gonna tell you right now, when you first watch it, you might be like, that looks complicated but it's surprising how intuitive it is. And I have talked to teachers who teach continental knitting and a number of them told me that they love to teach the Norwegian Pearl because people actually tend to pick it up quite quickly. So I would try going that route. You shouldn't need to tension your yarn any differently between your knits and pearls. So I would be curious here, you didn't, you seem to have the knitting down. So I'm curious how you're holding that um, and why you feel you need to change it when you go into your pearls. So hopefully maybe try out that Norwegian pearl will help you keep your yarn tensioned as you already were for your knits. And you're just doing a little bit of a different movement there. Um, so that's where I would start. The other thing I do want to say, so I learned how to knit when I was about nine years old from my grandma and knit all of like a teddy bear blanket, never learned how to bind off, <laughs> but I returned to it when I was around 17 and I was graduating from high school and I retaught myself out of the book Stitch and Bitch by Debbie Stoller and it's all pictorials and at that time when I was relearning like YouTube wasn't really a thing yet, Ravelry didn't exist yet, but there were some knitting blogs out there but not a whole lot of knitting videos that I remember. There was one, knittinghelp.com. Oh, that was, she was fabulous. I don't know if that is still around but man, great resource. Um, so I did look at quite a few things there, but when I was first teaching myself, I really just went by the pictorials in that book. And you can imagine that learning from just drawings, it, you sometimes you lose things in translation, right? So I was knitting away, feeling pretty good about myself. And I was up north at our cabin and my grandma was like, honey, what are you doing? I was like, I'm knitting grandma. And she was like, well, <laughs> kind of. I was knitting through the back loop of every single stitch and had no idea. Uh, so my whole point to that little side story is if you do have a local yarn shop, even a store like Joann's or Michael's if they have knitting classes, if you can go somewhere, if, there, if you have a knitting guild, anywhere around where you could go and you could have somebody watch you knit, this might be a time when you would find it really helpful to get outside help because we can look at pictures and videos all day, but sometimes our brain and our hands just don't talk to each other. And it takes somebody else looking over your shoulder to go, oh, you're just doing this little thing a little bit different. And if you adjust that, you're gonna be more comfortable, efficient, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I always recommend learning brioche in person because I find that to be one of those things where you can feel like you're doing exactly what the picture shows, you're reading it, all these things, but there's something wonky going on. And a lot of times somebody else can spot where the hang up is in there, you know what I'm saying? So if you do have a resource you could find locally to go to, to maybe get a little one-on-one -on -one help, I would recommend it because I bet it would only take a few minutes of somebody watching you to go, oh, okay, this is how you might want to adjust that. 
Um, but in the meantime, check out that Norwegian pearl because that might help. And way to go teaching yourself to knit. And welcome to the club. We always need more knitters. All right. I think that's everything. I actually had my coffee quite a while ago now, and I feel like I am still just riding that wave. So sorry. I was fast talking. There's a lot to do here right now. And I got to get back to it. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that y'all have a great weekend. I know we're going to have a good one celebrating Levi. And I especially hope to see you back here next week. I try to release these videos every Friday morning. They're usually out pretty early. We'll see about what time this one comes out. It takes a minute to load these. So, but I have released one every Friday. There's lots more. If you're new here, feel free to check them out. Make sure to ask a question if you've got one. And thank you so much for spending some time with me. Bye.